and we are live. Hello, my name is Rina Deepthi Annabelle, aka Mommy Imperfect, and you're listening to The Sisterhood of Mommy Imperfect, the weekly podcast where I explore womanhood with the help of my fabulous guests. And at the end of the month, I do a power panel episode, and that's where I get together with my friends Romy and Kirith and take a look at the female focused news stories from the last few weeks. And all, you know, sometimes it's just things that we want to get off our chest, basically. But these episodes are always a lot of fun, and we've known each other for over 20 years. So you're going to get 100% unfiltered girl chat. And we are also live on YouTube. So if you are watching live, then feel free to join in with the chat. Drop us a comment. Even if you're listening, however you are, then definitely drop us a comment because we do love hearing from you. And here is what we're going to be talking about over the next uh, four minutes. So, right, the difference between self-care and selfishness, healthy Hindus and getting going back to your motherland. So, ladies, hello. 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 Mommy, how are you doing? Good, I'm good. I've just noticed how messy my background is, but I can't okay. hear you. <laughs> are, are they like socks or pants thrown over the? Uh, the... No, this is my daughter's. This is my daughter's room, but I think that's her old. That's part of her uniform on top of the cupboard there. Never mind. Uh, no, I'm good. I am good. I'm getting ready for some warmer weather, and yeah, uh, yeah ready to go. Cool. You all right, kiddo? Can you hear I'm us? okay. How are you? I'm, I can. I'm doing good. I can, I'm but it keeps cut out a bit. Yeah, you've gone a bit blurry, but it's all right. We can hear you. Um, okay. Well, okay. So, ladies, let's get straight into this, right? Um, do you think that therapy speak is making us more selfish? And by oh. that, I mean, are we using terms like boundaries, toxic relationships, self care, gaslighting? to justify ignoring other people's feelings, always putting ourselves first, and sometimes even backing away from our own families. Gerard, I'm going to let you go first on that one. Oh, this is like a really horrible one for me because um, people who might support me are going to think this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I think these terms are too loosely used, too widely used, I think. I mean, some of these terms come about from pop culture and from society and then they get used like yesterday in the news you heard about love bombing now being taken into consideration as abuse so while it's called love bombing it's now like being recognized more formally so those things are important but I think it's important to keep these words and terms in clinical settings or you know the official settings the more we use them out and about the mean it more the less meaning they have and somebody as somebody who suffered a lot of these things mm-hmm. I didn't know the terms of what was happening to me and I'm, I'm you know learned I've learned them all afterwards I didn't even know what catfishing was the police explained that to me because <clears throat> I never watched catfish but um things like love bombing um you know boundaries triangulation all, all those terms get thrown at me I know uh, we all know what they are we all know how it feels but once you use, start using the formal words it's like oh, it scares people into whatever. And I, I mean, I always tell people off for using the word trigger. Um, yeah, you've said that before, yeah. Yeah, and 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 I feel like I, I was literally about three weeks ago triggered by a report I had to read on my case. And that was a trigger and it set off nightmares and all sorts of things for two or three weeks. Now, that was a trigger. It wasn't just an emotional memory that made me feel a bit upset. There's a difference. Um, and it's it's those things and just things like, um, yeah, boundaries, these things, we, we do have to have them. But I think that they're not the same for everybody. And that's by overusing them, mm. we make a clinical term or a formal term, we turn it into something else. And that's my, my boundary might be something else with you but it might be something else with another friend so yeah. you know that because these things are personal and then you're putting a form or whatever onto them it's like oh it's you know where where are the boundaries to this you know where are the boundaries to using these languages when do we use them formally when so I think I think yeah I mean everything's become more colloquial everyone you know every next person is posting meaningful memes and 
this and that and giving advice on socials and for somebody like me I just like just whatever I'm like I don't want to hear it I've been through it you're talking nonsense mate <laughs> it's like that's how I feel right well, um I'm, ask I'm me you know it's like it. I'm glad you've said it because you know you have been through a lot and if people are listening and they're wondering what we're talking about then uh just look up um Gireth, sweet bobby and you'll find out because you know Gireth's uh, been through a lot basically that's the case that you mentioned um and I thought I'm sure regular listeners know about this already but it mm. but it is a bit like you know you you can't kind of have you can't have a disagreement with somebody or step away with from someone who you don't agree with uh, without saying oh they're just toxic they were gaslighting yeah. me toxic yeah uh, it's, isn't, isn't it the language, language has changed I had somebody I knew very recently who not who I've known since I was a kid um, we're not close or anything, but we talk occasionally, um, and I know the family. And um, I think I said something, something had come up, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't realise you knew so-and-so, that's so-and-so from da-da-da. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not speaking to him. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'm not saying that. I said I was just really surprised that you know him that well, that's all. And um, and it was, re again, related to my case. And um, I was like, okay. And I just said, oh, no, he, he probably doesn't even know he was a victim. I just casually said, he probably doesn't even know he's a victim. And the guy just got so scared. And he said, stop gaslighting me. And he blocked me. Literally oh my like God. that. Yeah. And I was like, what? You know, like, whoa, hang on there. And this guy's supposed to be somebody who's mindful and whatever and works with people. To, And I was just like, whatever. You know, it's like... <laughs> Oh so when people use these terms you've got to actually stand up for them as well um you've got to be able to say do you know something that's really bad if that person was a victim you know you've got to want to if you're really doing it from a good place then you have to be a good person go all the way you can't half-heartedly mm -hmm. do it no I mean I mean like it's, it's funny with like with my kids as well like they'll they'll say things like and they'll they'll say things and they'll think that they invented things like that's a red flag and I'm like, and then I'll, and I'm like oh my god like really are you trying to copy the way we speak I'm like oh, what like excuse me but people have been saying that for ages number one and and also they'll the gaslighting and these things you know they'll they know and it rolls off the tongue you know and like my eldest that really interesting where do you think they're getting that from is that that must be from like youtube influencers yeah, social media, and things, TikTok, social TikTok, media. TikTok, yeah that kind of thing yeah. YouTube but shorts, they that kind of thing and, you know, and tv programs as well yeah but they do start talking about it at school as well when they're talking about internet safety they and do. that's yeah. the red flag it, and that's this and it's do. like and to be fair i do feel like gen z are kind of leading the way in speaking up about things that our generation didn't speak up about before we didn't feel that comfortable to speak about things and okay maybe it has slightly gone the other way which is why we're talking about this but you know looking after your mental health better uh, and all that kind of thing uh it, it's a good thing and so they they have spoken about this we never what what did we know about any of this nothing we are we all deranged no no <laughs> <laughs> wow well. uh. <laughs> but okay. no it's <laughs> Like you sent the topic up. through it's like you know like it, it's really interesting but it's like why have we got to this point in the first place why has mental health just gone this way and we've talked about it so many times on here like what you know what why do we need to use these terms to start putting these boundaries in you know what was so wrong before you know we we can probably reel off a whole load of things but is gen z weaker or are they actually stronger Mm. there's a you know for me there's a massive question mark around these things and I'm not saying I, I'm saying yes one word but yes that good they're getting to speak out and say what needs to be said but also are we immediately go oh my god you're gaslighting me ah, oh my god run 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 or you know and then and then you're labeling people I mean not narcissism is another one that really gets to me like oh, yeah yeah dealing being with narcissistic yeah. yeah, and you're like, oh, you're, you know, it's somebody might display a few narcissistic traits, or because they do something once. Yeah, that's you know, it. You're done it's, for it's life. Prolonged, yeah. yeah, and it's a yeah. prolonged pattern of behaviour that you're looking at. It's not a, and you know, it's very, and it's not nice to label people like that because no. immediately you put a pattern in people say, oh, that that you might not get on with that person. Somebody else might. It just might mean that you're not a good fit. It doesn't mean that persons are not because you've used the term so loosely. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's, and that's how I feel 
Um, That's become the baseline of, of, of <clears throat> describing anybody who you feel like doesn't really quite fit into yourself or you're not quite sure about them or whatever. So I don't know, it might it used to it used to be mad woman or bonkers or crazy or bagel, but now it's like, oh, she's toxic or she's and it encompasses so many like, you know, it's another level, isn't it? It's another level. Yeah. Or narcissistic or whatever. And we've got all these all this new language, haven't we? And I think um, it really depends on context and intent if whether it's being abused like you know are we just abusing all these words and just saying oh well sorry I don't want to talk to you anymore so I'm just gonna you know Put make this your up. problem <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a boundary and all this sort of stuff and another mm-hmm. thing I found was really interesting in the article that you sent Rena, which was you know if you're on the receiving end of all this therapy speak like you know if you if a friend says to you oh breaks up with you basically and and says that you know they're just it's not you it's me and I'm concentrating on myself and I really can't give you the emotional space to sort of you know deal with your shit it's just basically what they're saying (laughs) that's horrible isn't it like if any of you said that to me I'd be like oh my god I'd probably need a dictionary Uh, mm. to look it all up first and exactly exactly what you mean mean, so it's really easy to be the giver to be like yeah just spew it out just be uh, you know I mean, we're all, we're all being abused. Yeah. I think it's taking advantage of the terms, the terminology. It's like, you know, using something for your benefit rather than to help everybody. Yeah. And to say, and it's the actual words as well, isn't it? Because they're so sort of like clinical. clinical. Right. And and so I I wouldn't know what to say. I'd be like, A, I'd have to probably go and look them up to probably really like, really understand. No, I would, I would, I just trying to make, you know, I, mean, yeah. I know obviously I know what toxic and narcissistic and all those things mean but I would it, it, they're just really scary words to for, for people to say them to yeah. you yeah but and also and we don't know what everything means because you know what no we're not, actually, ther- we're not therapists no, no we're not also we're like a degree in it but now everyone's got a degree it. <laughs> but also you have to be on it with the terms you have to be on it with the terms because I didn't for a long time I didn't know what a non-binary meant or binary or I was like I don't like for a long time like probably more longer than I should have you know so you have to be kind of like and we're kind of people who you know are kind of with Take it life as it is so, but yeah like but I'm just saying yeah. you know but the, the thing that you talked about and, and what was in that article that I sent you guys about all of this was like um uh I just want to give an example of it right which that you spoke about Romy when um I don't know, some, somebody got dumped by their longtime friend over text, right? And this is this was part of this article. And then the friend was like, oh, you know, is it something um, I did? And then um, the, the, the friend wrote, I'm in a place where I'm trying to honour my needs and act in alignment with what feels right within the scope of my life. And I'm afraid our friendship doesn't fit in that framework. This is the friend writing this, right? I can no longer hold the emotional space you wanted me to. And I think the support you need is beyond the scope of what I can offer. Um, it, it is. <laughs> can I just say something? I hate our memo or like, you know. Well, this is. That that whole thing, that whole saga there was what m- made me question, like, why would you do that on text anyway? That's pretty bad. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's bad behaviour, isn't it? Because if you feel yeah. that way, then perhaps this was, this was a conversation. And actually, if you care about this person, this person was your friend. Yes, you don't want to be friends with them, but they deserve that, right? I mean, this person deserves... So how is that person saying... And the other, Because it's so the other easy. Is, they probably also but, hate confrontation. But the other thing so is... That, why not just say, look, you're my mate. I've got stuff going on. I just can't be dealing with your stuff right now. Yeah, that's, that's the straightforward speak for yeah. it, right? Yes. Because people don't, they don't actually say that to each other that much anymore. And, you know, I don't know if I you do. know this. <laughs> I do. I, you, you do, okay. But however, um, now, you know, people used to pick up the phone. How are you? Okay, that picking mm. up the phone, using a phone for an actual phone call for, um, Gen Z Need people permission. generally, I'm just generalizing, it's it's rare. It's rare that you would actually just phone someone, hello, use a phone for, for being a phone, right? It's either mm. any one of these social media ways to get in touch with someone or WhatsApp or something like that. You know, it's really that. And I think all voice notes, because voice notes is like you, okay, yes, we can't be bothered to type sometimes, right? But it's sometimes, a halfway house. Yeah, mm. but then sometimes a voice note is... I don't want to get a response from the other person. I want to just say my thing, right? I want to say my thing. And something like this is, I don't want a response from you. 
I want to just say my thing. And 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 what I think what's happening now, like I'm not a psychologist, it's just my personal view, is that like a two way conversation, it's not it's, it is can be an uncomfortable thing. It can be an uncomfortable yeah. thing, right? But it's a normal part of communication and a normal part of life. But but people are a bit more like wary of that now because it's like, oh well then they're gonna say this and I'm gonna say that and then you know how am I gonna like say my bit and you know what I play out the conversation in the head before anything's even happened and I mean we've all done that in our lives regardless of what era we're in but it's obviously if you're not used to having two-way conversations and this is where I say you know all these things that are so important human interaction communication all these things are so important and we're not doing enough of it we're not seeing people face to face enough you're not meeting up with friends and going out enough with yeah. you know social lives aren't exactly social lives there's always got to be something bigger to it or you know everyone's busy taking pictures rather than actually concentrating yeah. on your yeah, friends and having fun, um, yeah. it, it, all that kind of stuff and and you know I feel that's half the problem why you know, that anxiety exists because you don't know how to have that conversation you don't know how to deal with these important issues and communications that you need to have and and then it leads to like it's that kind of a righteousness I've I've used this language therefore it justifies my feelings because mm. these are clinical terms yeah, right I'm just gonna shut so you it, down I'm just gonna yeah. shut you down <laughs> and that's abusive and yeah. and if you look at um narcissism and those things that behavior in itself when you shut another person down and don't have that allow that two-way communication that's an abusive trait Mm -hmm. so you go around in a full circle with it um I think it's quite important to to kind of realize that obviously these terms are they're, they are necessary and the therapy is necessary therapy speakers necessary because therapy is necessary and you know one in four people in the UK experience a mental health problem each year right so that's a, yeah, a lot we've of all people. become more educated on mm. on all on all these we things have. right that, and that's great and that's you know that's, it that's is great thing. but the people a lot of people who are using these terms and you know on social media making these they're just influencers they're not they're unlicensed they're not practitioners you're 100 percent right like some of them are actual uh, psychiatrists or psychologists some of them are and 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 i know some who are amazing you know my mom yeah. was one of them and you know mm. i've had it on, on other shows and whatever and on this podcast and they're very informative and they talk a lot of sense but then yeah, some Dr. People... julie is another one on instagram she's really good as well yeah mm. she's really, she is really good as well it's um, follow the right then, people it's that follow the right that's it follow the right people who are actually qualified people they've spent years of their life dedicated to this field and they know what they're talking about not oh you learned a few terms and you're throwing them around willy-nilly and uh I don't know like you know obviously Kiddoth you've had therapy you know and when you have therapy those that it's not just throwing around those terms it's actually oh, not definitely like, not actually, you don't even hear you don't even you don't, you you don't, don't even, even use yeah. those terms really um it it's very very like you talk normally you talk you know like you don't go around saying like yeah he gaslit me like you actually explain what happened and like it's for them to tell you it's gaslighting or it's for them to yeah. tell you it's whatever so you know I talk like my witness statement for example does not ever Mention use a clinical term speak, yeah. it literally explains I said this but I was certain 100% certain, 200% certain that that was what was happened. But I was being told by five people that was not true. So I was being gaslit, right? Mm. That's called gaslit. But I had yeah. to, I didn't know the term then, but obviously I know it now. But that's not how you explain. You don't turn around and tell somebody. It's like you, you're, you're saying what, you know, you're, you're diagnosing something before it's, mm. you know, before yeah. you've heard symptoms. <clears throat> yeah. Um. What do we think about this whole self-care thing so self-care you know we must concentrate on self-care and a bit self-care and all this where where is there a line between self-care and selfishness now I know that might be a controversial thing to say because people are like oh my god but don't you like having time for yourself and doing a face mask and this and that but then sometimes it is a bit like you know what no I'm not joining in self-care my mental health I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that for you and whatever have we become a little bit selfish in in the name of self-care 
It's just another term, know. isn't I, it? I just, I don't know. It depends on what you're giving up on. I mean, are you giving up on night in front of the TV with your partner or or are you giving up on, you know, it, I, I don't know. It's really, it's a fine line, I feel like. Um, I don't, I don't again. Think I, yeah, exactly. It's subjective. Again, I don't really feel like, you know, I'm, I'm self, just being aware of self-care, the, the, the word, you know, we always throw about, oh, you've got to look after yourself, got to look after yourself. And you think, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never really made a difference to me. I've never gone, oh, right, I'm now going to look after myself. But the word self-care and, and the spotlight on it and all these things we can do and, and just, you know, linking, you know, spending time with yourself, with your mental health and all that kind of stuff. It has really made, um, so I've made, I've made efforts to sort of, to do self-care. So I will take time out on the weekend even if it's just an hour and I don't feel like I've slipped into selfishness yet I mean I you know I still do the things I need to do I still help the kids when they you know all that kind of stuff but I can see that that could happen with with some people and it and again it can just be an excuse of sorry I can't meet you on that date uh, because you know my kids are busy and <laughs> Like yeah. I said really yeah. earlier, yeah. Like, wasn't you said today about yeah. something else. <laughs> yeah, but it does slip it. But mm. I can see how you know. Again, you can bandy it around and just say, "Oh no, sorry, I uh, I can't come to this wedding or I can't come to this you know function now mm. because I'm practicing self care." But I have it has it has actually entered my mind a little bit, like you know, because you know how you know it's you know Indian wedding season is coming or any wedding season is coming up now right and so so many functions and stuff and sometimes I do think gosh you know I am out every weekend and should I feel oh should I I mean can I ring this person up and say you know what I'm just really tired and I need a few and and I and I and I will go no because uh, you know I can't do that because I'm just gonna sit there by myself and probably you know regret not going or you know all those sorts of things and I'm going to see lots of people and that's really that's almost self-care as well sometimes as well isn't it just Mm, just being out and seeing people and just you know if it's cousins Mm. and people you haven't met in a Mm, long time nice yeah yeah Yeah, I don't yeah go on didn't we just call this me time once upon a time me time yeah me time or looking after yourself or yeah 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 yeah. you know constantly so I need some me time you know that's what we just say it needs some yeah. me time and it's mm-hmm. like that's your time for yourself and it's just another term but self-care makes it sound so much more formal yeah. and it, you know it's that whole thing it's, and self-care. It's, <laughs> it's like self-care you know hour out for I self-care don't know. I don't know whether like I like I was just saying you know when you're saying looking after yourself or me time I probably didn't really take that on board but I really but, did with yeah self-care. no self-care I makes it like more formal just, yeah I guess that's, that's why thing. it can be it can be a good thing um but I'm, I'm going to move on to the next thing now because I, it's lunchtime live and obviously I don't want it to go over an hour but also you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned weddings as well there right and that whole thing of like weddings you know you're going to go to this function that function obviously we are all Indian and we have like a thousand functions per wedding it's wedding season that could be multiple functions multiple like you know hundreds of pounds spent on everything including outfits and presents whatever oh, yeah. so um because wedding season is coming up, it means that Hindu season has begun, right? And so there seems to be this change from, you know, the back in the day thing of getting pissed in a pub, wearing a veil and an L plate. And then uh, that was quite 90s, actually. I think we kind of did that for you, Romy, didn't we? Um, something like that and then like and then you know it became like the excesses of like you know having overpriced shots in overpriced clubs and then like oh let's all go to Dubai for a girls week for a hen night and craziness like that so now the new trend is healthy hen so healthy hen is like uh you know cookery classes yoga classes together um I don't know spas and things like that do you think that that is a better way to celebrate a bride to be or do you think the whole thing has gone a bit mental and people should go back to just having a drink with friends you know what? I hadn't heard of this healthy hen do I had to I had to laugh out loud Rina when I heard that because I am actually going on a hen do and it is not anything healthy maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe the sunbathing might maybe be healthy. Unhealthy. The vitamin d the vitamin d I will get in Ibiza will be healthy <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not, you know, I mean, you should see the WhatsApp group. There's no, there's no, there's no, it's all about party, 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 party. And yeah, I mean, whatever that party means, right? It doesn't necessarily okay. mean getting, getting lashed, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. But so I, I, 
I mean, I would do all those things with you both on a on a on a spa weekend or a whatever. But it doesn't really equate to Hindus because Hindus, you know, obviously they're supposed to be like the final hurrah as a single person, right? To let loose. I mean, <laughs> and, and and of course you can do that whilst doing a sound bath with everyone around you. But in that, if that's your idea of fun, then fabulous, you know. But no, I haven't. That's not planned for this weekend. Right, so a, a very wholesome and unhealthy uh, Hindu. No, I you. said the vitamin D that I will receive. Yes. Is very oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there might oh, be some yeah. fruit juice in the in the cocktails as well, if you want to um, look at yeah. it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I, I wouldn't equate. I wouldn't equate the two. But actually, quite fun, quite fun. But it doesn't does it really have to be a Hindu? No, it could be those sort of things. Sound a holiday, fabulous. Or a, yeah. I mean, yeah, Guinness, what, what do you what do you think? Do you think it's all gone a bit mad and it's like too much money and just too much time doing these things? So it's nice to make it special, like you're saying, the final hurrah and all that kind of stuff. It's good. You need a bit of cheek on the night. Um, you know, you need a bit of fun. You need one well, night or weekend. You you want to have that fun and you want to relate it to that the occasion. And I think that's what's important. But I've never, you know, I'm not somebody who's about excesses um oh I don't know can you can you hear me both of you still yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you're both frozen no 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 well we can you okay, hear that's us that's fine you're listening um, intently about you're not you don't I do can excesses. I couldn't yeah I couldn't hear you yes so yeah you know I'm not excessive in anything I do but I do like to go the extra mile to make things nice and important and that kind of thing but it's like um you know if a whole weekend is too much for me it's like do a day, do a night, you know, you might want to all stay the night after having the night out, but you want to have the fun bit of it. So you might want to do something nice and relax. But, you know, for me, it's like kind of maybe relax and work up to the night out and you're going to have a bit of cheek. Things like strippers and that kind of stuff is not me. People still do it. People do do it. and But that kind of stuff's not what I'm about. But yeah, you can be cheeky in a bar or in a club or wherever you're going out and having a good time. Um, but yeah, healthy, wholesome. But I don't know. I don't know. I just think it should be a good night out with a bit of a, you, you have that laugh, mm. that cheek, and you have that be make your hen the center of attention. Do what you need to do. Make it memorable. You know, it's it's um. It, but yeah, you don't have to go crazy doing it um uh it's a sign of the times isn't it it's like you know 10 years ago stag do's hen do's it you know they've got such a not a bad reputation but you know some countries don't even want you to who was it recently was it amsterdam who's banned stag parties oh, or, or, they, stag or they did or they did they did that video to say please don't come here or something i can't remember now maybe it was Amsterdam. yeah it was yeah it was somewhere that did that recently because it has given them a bad reputation but yeah. that's like you no know, like compared to hindus stag dues they're like, that's some next level stag dues have always been some, on another level no one is going to tie their female friend to a lamppost but naked and do madness like that which <laughs> has been the case with some i'm going to a club friend. night yeah i went to a club night in shoreditch once and there was a guy naked sellotaped to a lamppost oh my god <laughs> look at your face Oh my god! No one, no woman will like, do that to whoa. their female friend. It's it's definitely a no. guy thing. I think that's definitely a guy thing. Um, Romy, do you remember your hen night? Yeah. So we, you, Gilles, you. I remember you couldn't make it for some reason, but then you I had a lot of it. input into the cheek. You know, you're saying the cheek. You definitely yeah, added the cheek. cheek without even being there with like. <laughs> Which you because because you were wearing this big board like this big like oh yeah know, like, as a gigantic. poster on my back or something <laughs> yeah, was, it was a massive like cardboard uh, poster gigantic hung off of you with oh you know I'm getting married and I've got to do this this it is my hen night and I've got to do this this oh, this yeah. tonight I don't know to -do like list. to do list which were all like very uh like some questionable things not like too bad like you know if anyone who is related to you <laughs> is watching this or your own husband. I can say that you know you were very good nothing like uh dodgy happened but it was like fun stuff and you had definitely you had a veil right and some, a veil. something like that but it was it was a fun night it was like dinner and drinks yeah and yeah, yeah. yeah we had, it, it we wasn't had fun. It, I mean it wasn't like 
you know, a week in Dubai or something like that. I mean, this, these are people's head nights now sometimes. A week in Dubai, I know. And actually, I was just rem- trying to remember what we did for my cousin. And, and, and we tried to packing so many things. And actually, that did include like other stuff. But like how in night if it's... We, we did it we did like a Thames Hen- rocket no, Hen- on the, on the, on the Thames what? it was really good like a speedboat on the Thames wow that was really cool that was really cool actually um and we did like afternoon tea and it's like you said good it's built up to sort of an evening out I mean I guess yeah I think it's I think it's great that people are finding alternative ways and maybe more holistic ways to doing stuff because not everyone's into that sort of lad and ladette culture and not everyone's into alcohol like they used to be though you know, it's it's yeah. that sort of fashion is out. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of that's true. Not really doing that kind of stuff. And actually, now if I, you know, when I, I'm not sure about the, the full plans of it, if there were, if there was something different, yeah, I'd probably say bring it on. You know, I like a sound. I think I've said just to say a sound bath or something before. <laughs> Maybe that might be fun. I don't, I don't even know what that is. I don't. I don't even know what that is. Maybe you know, they have those bowls and then oh, they like tap ding. it and it makes yeah, 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 and it's like this aura that I don't know it's over know, you, so you have a sound yeah okay like the wash over some, you and yeah for me for and... a hen or a stag being too holistic is just like I I'd get like come on where's the fun in it like I don't find yeah. like it's nice but you I still feel like you still to build up to something fun and memorable cheeky that whole thing I mean what chocolate, do you think will, of chocolate willies and all that yeah, <laughs> chocolate what yes. do you think of hag nights the chocolate the willies. Week. Don't you remember what the chocolate willies were part of your bridal shower or something? And then, yeah, um, they were. Who ended up eating them? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, those were still popular because on the WhatsApp group, there I've got lots of willy themed um, props that we're going to make my cousin wear from right. the airport, you know. <laughs> um, didn't your five year old cousins end up eating those chocolates? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, I definitely. It's, um, they knew what they were. They just, no, they just yes, they didn't, chocolate. Yeah, it's just chocolate. Just um, chocolate. Yeah. But, no, but what about yeah. hag night? What do you think of those? Because a, a lot of people start doing joint hen and stag nights. Oh, okay. No, you're going to spend the rest of your life together. Like, do your own thing, and then I don't. That's my thing, anyway. That's just like. But th- but lots of people are doing them. Oh. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think they are, and it's and you know we've done we've even done like we've like the girls we've even gone away on a on a sten a sten which is basically like a stack like a what did you say hag, hag yes yeah, yeah. so we called it sten and it was it was my sister-in-law's brother that was getting married and um we just decided that we would go on holiday <laughs> like before the wedding and and just have a nice sort of like you know nothing to do with the groom nothing to do with the bride we just thought well let's all his cousins and sisters just get together and and, and go to I think we went to Brussels and it was great yeah it was kind excuse, of a good, it's like kind excuse. of a good way to get to know the other side and what you like you know when you got the wedding especially in our stuff when you love that cheek yeah. and getting to know people beforehand you know what you can yeah. do on the wedding day and how you can do stuff and it's kind of a p- good way of doing getting to know them yeah and their, what they're you know what they can take and what they can't take yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, like, no, it, I'm it, all for the classic classic hint, mm. like, yeah yeah, but yeah also like I, in in terms of like financially I have been that friend who you know when you feel pressured to do things like oh let's do a week here and then like and I have done that and I couldn't afford it at the time but you feel like oh my friend's getting married and you know because we like some of us got married when we were quite young you were 23 Romy another Mm. one of our friends got married at a very similar age and you know when you're young and you're trying to well you're basically young and broke and you know (laughs) (laughs) and and it's like and it's quite difficult especially if you're living on your own and stuff and renting then it's like oh you know a week here for a hen thing and you kind of feel pressured to spend money that you don't really have and so I just I just remember being that person and so I would understand completely if it was like if someone was like you know it's it's just too much and I like I, I always think that because having been that person can everybody afford it is it okay is it too much pressure Mm. on because then you've got presents and you've got like the actual wedding and this and that. It's a it's lot. lot. It's Being a guest is a it's financial a commitment, isn't it? It's quite yeah, a financial yeah. commitment. Yeah, no, it is nowadays, isn't it? There's so much, there's so much to it mm. that you don't, you know, you don't realise at the time. But you know, you've just got to set your boundaries. <laughs> I, I I also think part of this holistic 
I was avoiding sorry, using that sorry. word earlier. I, I was know, like boundaries. I I like, yeah. <laughs> but that whole holistic thing earlier, sometimes I feel like it, it's a way of, you know how like the bride always does her little thing beforehand to relax. Yeah. It's like, okay, we'll just do it as a joint thing. So she doesn't do it separately either. Cause everyone's going to do it anyway. Like the spa thing sometimes. Yeah. And you know, things like, Oh, you cut out. You cut out. Gidget is currently frozen. So do you know what? I'm going to... Oh, Kirit, where are you? Come back, come back, come back. <laughs> okay, so listen, I'm sure she's going to be back on soon. But I'm going to move on to the final topic, which is kind of like something that I really want to talk... Oh, hello, are you back? Are you unfrozen? Are you frozen? Or are you I think so. What's just... going on? My internet keeps... Yeah, it's your internet. I'm like, it's being a bit funny today. But I've, I've just said that I'm moving on to the final topic. So I've just... Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It, uh, um, yeah. I'm going to okay. like, lose the other internet, I think. Oh, okay. All right. So listen, I, I wanted Sorry, to really talk about, I wanted to talk about something that is, is kind of like a personal one. This one, it's not in the news or whatever, but it's something that came to the forefront of my mind after this family trip to Ghana that I've just come back from. And that is kind of like the importance of going, you know, back home to your motherland. You know, it really just made me think about this. And I've really been feeling it recently, like this whole, like that connection that you have with your mother country. Like how important do you think it is to uh, go home, at, like what well, back home, wherever back home is. If you're a child of an immigrant, to how is it like a vital piece of the puzzle for you to go to that motherland? Do you think, or, or is it like you know what we're British now? That's a very like uh, old school thing, and let's just leave that there and move on from it. It depends. I think it really depends on the connection that you feel that, that when you're there. I mean, you clearly you had a, you know emotional and a spiritual connection and you felt and you perhaps you felt it and I've had some trips to India where I've you know I I have definitely felt that when I was younger and we've been going not regularly but I think we had been two or three times before before I had got married and I had felt those things I think older later in life less so I just felt like um I don't know, maybe it was just the experience we had on that particular trip, but I, it doesn't feel like home. Um, doesn't feel like home. I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm, I'm British and, and home is, is the UK. So it doesn't, I don't really, I don't still feel like I have that connection. I'm, I, I might go on a trip. I don't know. We're planning one in the next year or two and feel differently. So I, I, get, I guess it depends on where you are sort of, I guess, emotionally at that time as well. But I have definitely had trips where I felt, oh, wow, you know, I feel a real affinity with where I am. And I, you know, this feels and I, and I have actually physically felt it like on the inside. And I remember, you know, those memories are seared in. I, I, I have had some brilliant trips over there. And then sometimes I've I, it's been the opposite. Um, are, are you glad that you've had these experiences, though, that you've actually gone and touched that midi of oh, the place where of you're course. going? Of course, yeah, definitely. We've had some really nice holidays, and it's you know we've we've you know we've taken the kids as well. Um, we've shown them this is where you know Nana and Nani were brought up. This is Nani's house. This is you know Nanaji's house, and and they love seeing that. I mean, I hope they. I mean, those have been great trips. Those have been really really nice sort of nice mm, trips. And nice. Yeah. Going back to Harmandra Saab or going you know nice going to the temples and stuff. We've done all of those things, and it's been it's been lovely, but. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I and and that's what they are. They're great trips. They're great trips. Mm. Yeah, um, and that's fair enough. You don't need to feel like oh, I need to live there now. You know what I mean? But Kira, yeah, what about I, you? I, I couldn't. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same. But I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I just want to know what you think, Kira, because you know, for you, obviously, your parents uh, were came from Kenya, didn't they, and not mm. India, and and so how how do you feel about all of this? So um, I'm quite somebody, somebody who's quite connected to my past and my past is important. Where we come from to me is important. Mm. Um, so Kenya, I always consider like a second home. I have memories growing up there. If you go through my photo albums, my second birthday was there. And there's like, you know, a nice party out in the back of the house there. And, you know, um, my dad spends a lot of time there. I haven't been back for a good few years, though. But it's still 
somewhere I have a connection to because my, you know, grandparents, even my great grandparents, some of them spent time there. But then I have, you know, which might, I've said it before on here, but for those who don't know, I've never been back to Punjab or India. But I have an affinity for that too. I can't watch something about my bind or something without getting emotional. Um, we had a family reunion for one part of my family, so my nanaji's part of the family, which I organised with a couple of my cousins, um, where we had the family tree rolled out, we had old photos like all over the walls, um, and people were out to walk around, and like kids were like, oh my God, that's my great-great-grandfather, and my, you know, that kind of thing. And I think as as generations here in the UK go further on, like my brother, who's 25, he doesn't really care about probably Kenya or India at all that much. Mm-hmm. He listened to his Punjabi music and he understands all of that. Yeah. But, but like for me, like I think if you if you've been there yourself a lot of the time, or if you have a clo- close connection with something, or you understand your heritage or that kind of thing, it just means more to you. If like I can like with that part of the family where we did that. Uh, reunion with you know we can trace it all the way back to Guru Arjan Devji's time and so That's you know it, like, yeah. and that again connects you with your faith a bit more it connects you with you know it, that meaning that it gives you and you're like why would you not want to go and understand that why would you not want to go and touch that why would you not want to experience that and that's a part of me that that's part of my story um so for mm-hmm. me like that whole thing is really important and of course I want to go back to the Punjab and my, my dad was like I think a few months ago we were talking to somebody and my dad's like oh yeah yeah you know he goes to India like and goes to the bin but he's never taken any of us um that was because he was rebuilding the house in the bin for the years that he went so it was like it's just going to be messy but then then he's never taken any of us back and like he thinks we're not interested I'm like who told you we're not interested because I'm yeah. planning to go even if I don't go with you my parents be- did obligatory before you went to uni we all I mean we did this individually so before I went to uni before I met you ladies um, I had been in India that previous August and we started in what September right so mm. and and then my brothers did that my parents did the same with my brothers so we didn't all go at the same well we did on a few trips but we we had to go that they Your felt like they trip. had to yeah we, yeah we had to you know or well, they let you loose in 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 the world it's like remember where you came from yeah, <laughs> yeah before yeah before uni happened yeah <laughs> that's really funny but yeah they 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 you know felt that that was really important and I and I and I really appreciate that because it's those trips and the and the connections mm. you find and you know and yeah. the smell and sometimes there'll be a smell of like I don't know you know like yeah. in the wind, like of something burning and it just takes you back and you think oh back, my god yeah. I'm in the bin like this I love this smell <laughs> <laughs> and you're like I love it you know or yeah, like uh, you, know, you, you take the kids to a farm or whatever and you're like actually that doesn't smell the same it smells different but yeah you do you do have those you do have and you want yeah. to share that then you want you want you know you, you want your kids to have that and Veed it's like we can on... go ahead. I was just saying that Veed went with his dad for a wedding and there was lots of family from here going and 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 it was great they had a great time and I and I feel really happy that he had that experience because it's you know he had such nice. a good time yeah such a good time and I you know I hope that 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 sows the seed in him that he will you know off his own back want to go again and they do actually so yeah. they do so it definitely would take him take them back but do I feel like I'm do I feel like it's my like home no uh, even when you say motherland yes I'm I am my pe- my parents were born there and you know most of my mom's younger life would have been there for, to the age of like 20 yeah. but my dad was 13 you know when he when he first came over so yeah. I don't know I yeah I think some so, people yeah. have a stronger would have a stronger connection maybe or when you know, our, you know, some of our cousins go yearly. You know, they've always taken their children there, and, and I would like summer to. holidays and things like that. You know, but we just go, oh no, it's going to be too hot. <laughs> and it's also it's incredibly it's, a, it's it's an ordeal with your kids, like you know, to go the whole of you there, and like it's a lot of money as well, and and the heat. So there's certain seasons which you wouldn't want to go in, but like I don't know, like for me, it's just like 
I feel I totally identify with what you're saying and like the certain smells and things like that that really take you back there and even for me sometimes it's how the light hits like I'll go outside yeah. and the light is it's like oh you know you just feel like you're back in a certain place in India and I was really really feeling that before I went to Ghana something I don't know every few years if I don't go I'll feel this real longing to go I'll miss it and then I you know one day I went outside and it was like the way the light was I thought oh you know I really miss it and I want to just go back and then I was feeling like oh you know I was kind of like mm, is is my husband's motherland is Ghana going to fulfill this thing in me of how I'm feeling right now because this was just before we went and then at the same time like my parents at that time when we were in Ghana they were in India so they were there so you know maybe we would have could have gone there if we didn't go to mm. Ghana but it, but for us because it was so important to kind of balance that thing with our kids because they've been to India two times and so has um, Tony but then I have never been there and the kids have not been to Ghana and so it was, it was really important to balance it and you know what it, it did actually for me um, fulfill something in me of like another home and it, and obviously I don't have any like roots there myself but like I have to for me it's, it's quite important that my kids do and like my husband yeah. does and there is family there and, it's and part of your story how can you say that like, you, his family is your family that's your story exactly. there now right and and the and the and the really nice thing is that since we've come back well even before we went my parents are like oh we want to come one day and so definitely that's since nice. we've come back they're like oh next time we're coming we're coming oh. and that, and it's like and you know how obviously you know I'm Punjabi Indian like you and it was a big deal for me to get married to my husband and everything like that and so that growth from here to them then saying do you know what uh, we actually feel a connection with Ghana because of you know our son-in-law and our grandkids. we feel it already and it makes us want to go with you there and experience that because my dad actually said this to me and and I thought you know what like I'm quite lucky in that way and that's really nice but it was nice to feel like it's got a very India vibe it's got a very it's yeah. very very at one point I got very confused because <laughs> no no I was because no literally I went we arrived in the evening right and like my sister-in-law's house was kind of the exact you could be in Delhi in an apartment right yeah. and the, the, the weather was the same it was the same kind of vibe there were like, you know, some random dogs barking in the night. There was a cockerel in the morning. Like, you know, like random things like that. And then I'm like, where am I? Like, I literally genuinely thought I'm going to go outside in the, and, and see like random Indians and rickshaw valley around. Obviously, I was in a different country, so that wasn't going to happen. And then once we were at a mall and then see even like the malls are very similar. And then I was for a split second, I was like, I went to this coffee shop. We all went there together and there was loads of Indian people in there randomly. And I looked around and I was like, what? Where am I? What? Am I, I was literally, am I in Delhi or Accra? Like, I'm really confused at the moment. But it's definitely got a similar vibe. kind of a, a vibe to it. But I, I feel like, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but like I, I do sometimes say that I was made in India and delivered in England because I was literally, my mum was already pregnant with me and came here to give birth to me like you know when you go to mm. your parents to have your kid that kind of traditional thing and then my dad came over and then we were supposed to go back but it, our story yeah. is such that we never ended up going back so I don't know maybe that's why I feel a bit more connected to it what I mean like it's yeah. a real big part of so the story yeah. there's yeah you're conceived there so it's just like yeah, yeah. like you know we, we went to because once um um, we were with like family in the car and my chacha was like pointed out a house he was like oh Rina you were born there that's where you were born and I was and everyone was like she wasn't born there but he meant you were conceived you, yeah. you know it's a bit like okay but I do yeah. find with like Kenya and like Uganda and Zimbabwe we've got like we've got family in you know Gambia and we've had family yeah yeah we've had family in lots of like African countries and it's like when people went from what was pre-partition India to to there, it, the climate, the everything suited them. Like you yes. know, I still my elders, my masiya, my you know, my late Bwaji and stuff used to make bunia and put them on the tat there in Kenya, and we still yeah. get those handmade. Like I couldn't imagine buying bunia from a shop <laughs> ever because I am so used to a particular nice. taste and a particular yeah. style of really and they make them because the weather suits it when it's really yeah. hot in Kenya they'll do exactly what they used to do in the bin and that's how it's been taught there continuously whereas here in the UK who makes really I hear like not that many people do 
and because you're we don't not, have the heat for it. to dry them, you will exactly. Be raining <laughs> you just don't have. Like, you you would just literally don't have... have to do use your airing cupboard. If you yeah, we could have last summer when it was really hot, right? And I was like, I was like, come on, somebody teach me how to make ready. I want to, I want to do this. I want to do this, but nobody had like whatever. I was like, screw you. But um, but you know, it's that kind of thing, and and I think sometimes that. And again, that bin mentality that they had, because they went straight from the bin straight to there, which was in an environment that kind of was the same, shall yeah. we say. And they lived in their little communal groups like they lived in the bin there. They kept certain things going because they could, there, just yeah. the way they did in India, right? Yeah. And 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 because they could. Whereas here, it's a totally different ball game. I speak to you know, my client Amrit, Amrit's dad when he came here from job in 1956 he landed in the snow he'd never seen like leaves trees without leaves you know it was like winter yeah. and he was like what the hell is this? he thought they were dead trees is what he said to me he, <laughs> you know it was just like you know he came as a teenager I think he was 14 or 15 or whatever he was and and it was a totally different ball game whereas if he'd gone to like Kenya or something at that age it would have been very different mm. I, I am I'm so um I'll be so interested to know how you feel and think about everything you know, when you go to India. Like I'm actually really mm. looking forward to you going because I love you. <laughs> yeah, because no, because like honestly, like I feel like somebody should make a documentary out of it because you know you haven't been up till now, and like you said, you you are very kind of like aware of your culture and. You yeah. know, it, in a way, it's kind of like you've got two motherlands, as it were, as well. One of which you haven't gone to, and one is obviously Kenya. Mm. So you just need to. Good. Yeah, and it's strange that like that I have that affinity with Punjab, with that like, Punjab, and no wanting to know my bin and watching. There used to be this like uh, on on Sikh channel. There used to be they for a while they did Mira, I can't remember what it was Mira bin, Mira something, whatever it was, and they did my my mom's bin, and oh, um, cool. and I remember I think it's probably on YouTube somewhere still, but I remember we all went to my my Manji's house. She was alive then. We all sat there and watched it, and my mom Manji was on it, and my Nanaji's brother was on it and I was sitting there watching with my like just, I'm getting emotional now but with tears streaming down my face thinking oh. they were possibly my grandfather's friends I want to go and talk to them I want to go and do that I want to experience that I want to you know connect mm. so that affinity is just like that longing to know where I came yeah. from and you I, I feel like yeah. you will be, it will be, will be very emotional for you when you mm. go, I can I know, yeah. you know loads of them because are you going are you planning a trip I want to go yeah so I'm I'm hopefully well fingers crossed next year I want to go yeah do it yeah yeah definitely I, mean, I want to go I'm not planning I mean I've said it I've put it out there but yeah I, I want to go um mm. I've got a really busy actually yeah I've got a really busy rest of the year this year um beginning of next year but like yeah I'm hoping like next year at some point I will I will go and yeah. carry on filling up the rest of my family tree which has got like 500 people on it already but yeah it's amazing wow. that's amazing um yeah no I, I definitely think I know people who are listening might disagree but I definitely think it's it was like we're all made of these pieces like jigsaw pieces and that's kind of like you know some of those pieces are there that complete your story and I definitely. and I know that people are existing with like oh yeah you know we're British this that and who cares fine but mm -hmm. I I think part of you I don't know just to even if you're not feeling it and you're not like mm, I don't want to don't have to live there but just to kind of just to go and see because I think it's very different to be in a place rather than just hear about it or see it on tv or you know it's very yeah, yeah. I mean but I have cousins who've gone back to India and be like I'm never going again like oh wow <laughs> just they've gone back to the bin and like they had you know I think like with the younger crowd, that's what I'm saying with the younger crowd. I don't know if that connection's there. I mean, they were born, my cousins, those those, those ones that went, were born in Kenya and came here when they were quite young. They've been to Kenya and back a few times. But going to India and going to the Bind for them was like a, I'm never going back. Oh my God. That yeah. was I think a lot like of crazy. young people have only got, I mean, their first trip has been maybe wedding shopping or, you know, st stuff like that. I've not gone when they were younger, maybe. Mm. Mm. Well, they went for a wedding, trip, and right? then they went to the bind. And then once I think they experienced the bind because the bind was like the little gullies you can't take a car in. I think it was really wet when they went; it was raining, yeah. jumping over mud. And he's just like, I can't, 
I don't know how people do it. I couldn't mm. do that. I'd never want to go there again. India's wants was enough for me. I'm like, it was like yeah. that. It was like, oh, oh no. I oh, know. I was like, oh my God. Him because it's amazing. <laughs> that is a shame. You, you know what? Yeah. I have to say, though, I, I have to say that I, I do know people like that as well. And then literally, uh, all they went to, and this is people in loads of different mother countries, all they went to was the village. And that's it. And they were like, oh, God, they hated it. Like, we didn't go anywhere, we didn't see anything. Mm. And like, I feel like um, with, with my dad, because he travelled a lot in India before and he was, you know, was a fully grown adult, like in his 20s, late 20s when he came here, right? Um, I think what he did with us was he took us around to loads of different places. He We travelled to so, like different states, you know, we went to random places like off the beaten track, like random tea plantations or random places. And, mm. you know, knowing Ajmer, him, like, knowing uh, him, it's probably like, you know, on an overnight coach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We have went on an overnight. Listen, w when I was at 15, an overnight train from Delhi to Rajasthan and back in, and, and the toilet was literally a oh. hole in the train floor in the, the bathroom so that your actual poo was, went onto the track. Now, now things have progressed. No, no, don't, don't get scared, kiddos. Uh, that was back then in the 90s, right? Now it's very nice. But, you know, we have done all these things and we, and so we know it's not just about okay we go to the house and stay there although we did do that and and mm. loved it as well and that and I feel like because when we went to Ghana my my husband was very much like oh I want the kids to really go there and think of it as a holiday place like enjoy it not just like there's your granddad's house that's it right do you know what I mean so we so they we 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 did see family and things and and went to touristy things but also did that kind of like poolside resort stuff, vacation yeah. re resort mm. life. You know, like going so, to Mombasa in Kenya is really important. It, like you yeah. go in Nairobi, do your bits. You do, yeah, it's really but important. That makes to, you feel like, oh, you know, it's a place that is a, nice. a desirable place to go. Yeah. You know, and it's nice. We have a nice time. We eat nice. You know, not just like oh god, the same thing. Like, and 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 that has happened. Like I feel all of them. Um, I mean, they do feel like it's about India, but the the little one doesn't really know much about it, and the older ones, they do know, but it's a little bit vague. But they definitely feel with Ghana because they're older that they've got you know when you get that feeling of like oh, I would want to go I would love to go again and I loved it and I and I and to me you know the person that I am that's an important thing so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well ladies we are coming to the end of our lunchtime live hour and um so I just want to say thank you once again you. for joining me um it's been lovely talking to you as always and I hope that um, those who've been watching have enjoyed it and if you're listening I hope that you've enjoyed this episode please do share it with people um, drop us a comment and let us know your thoughts on social media uh, make sure you're following me at sisterhood on mommy imperfect or at rena d annabelle and if you're on facebook there's a mommy imperfect facebook page as well uh, you definitely make sure that you subscribe because recently I'm hearing from people who are like I never miss an episode I've subscribed I get all the updates and everything so definitely make sure you do that but that's all from us for now. Peace out, Bernie. Bye. 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 <laughs>